So the difference between a vaccine, which we are all hoping for, um, and the Aeronap is that the protection from an Aeronap is temporary. So it would need to be reapplied uh, probably once a day, maybe for nasal spray a little bit more often. In the laboratory setting right now, so uh, killing the virus in a, a dish where it would infect uh, uh, human cells, um, it is 100% effective. And what makes Aeronaps so wonderful is that they're so stable that they survive um, aerosolization. So we can make, um, uh, put them in a little nebulizer um, and uh, uh, spray them, uh, breathe, breathe them in as, as, a, as in a, an aerosolized form. Or we can, um, in principle, formulate them in a nasal spray and therefore um, coat the, the, the nasal cavity and, and the lung epithelial surfaces um, with an antiviral agent that is highly, highly effective. So the spike protein is really the, the key that unlocks the, the door that allows the virus to enter cells. And by uh, binding to the spike protein, um, the Aeronap locks it into an ineffective state, in an inactive state, where it can no longer interact with the cell receptor. Here the approval should be um, easier. Um, because in a vaccine, we are interacting with the physiology of the human body. Um, the human body has to react to the vaccine to produce its own antibodies, which then gives a lasting effect. Um, whereas here, we are basically, aeronauts only interact with the virus. Um, they don't pay any attention um, to the human body. It should be relatively inexpensively available around the world. So not just the developed countries, but also in the developing world.